you're growing radishes or beets or carrots or turnips or parsnips in your garden and you're unsure when to harvest and exactly how to harvest them, well, I'm here to help. I'm Gardener Scott, a master gardener, and I discuss everything gardening so that you can become a better gardener. Today, let me show you how I harvest my root vegetables. It's morning in my garden and I'm getting ready to harvest some of my root vegetables. Morning is the ideal time of day to do the harvesting. You don't have any wilting from the hot sun so the leaves are nice and firm. And that's important because many of the leaves of these root vegetables are edible. Don't just think that you have to eat the root. Think that you can eat the entire plant. And getting the leaves when they're tasting good before they've lost the flavor during the day is a great time to target your harvest. If I'm harvesting more than just a couple of the plants, I put water in a bucket. This helps clean the roots and also keeps them fresh before I take them into the house. Root vegetables are among the easiest plants to grow and are especially easy to harvest. When you start your seeds, do note the days to harvest or days to maturity that you should find on your seed packet. And then after those seedlings begin to emerge, go ahead and mark on your calendar however many days that might be. That's a good point to begin looking at the plants to decide if they're telling you that they're ready to harvest. They're not all going to be harvested on that date because the weather changes, all of our gardens are different, the soil varies, but it's a good starting point. And then when you look at the individual plants on a day-by-day -day basis, it gives you a better idea of when they're ready. Let's go ahead and start by looking at these beets. I have a few rows of beets in this bed. They were all put in at the same time. But the plants that are on the right side of the bed are clearly smaller and less developed than the plants on the left side of the bed. So my initial focus will be to the plants on the left side. They're all vibrant green. The plants are looking wonderful. I've already gone past my expected start point. So I'm expecting that I can harvest some really good beets now. You want to get a really good close-up look of your plants. And as you look in, I can see that this plant right here has a very small root as far as the shoulder, the part that's pushing above the surface. But this one right here is big and beautiful. So this is a golden beet. And because the plant actually grows out of the ground, as it reaches the point of harvest, it's telling me this is ready. I'm going to go ahead and grab the entire top of the plant, all of the leaves that I can, and just gently work it from the soil. And right behind it, there's another one that's telling me it's ready to go. So I'll do the same thing and just pull this plant out. But these other two that are remaining, are still pretty small. So unless I want baby beets, I'm gonna let these continue to grow and I'm gonna let this earthworm go back into the soil to do its job. And I'll take these beets, rinse them in the water and then just set them in the bucket. That'll help keep the leaves nice and firm. And basically this plant is living still in this bucket of water before I take it into the house. I told you it was easy to harvest root vegetables, and now you see how beets can be extremely easy. Turnips are the same way. You just grab all of the upper leaves and gently work the root out of the soil. Because most of the root, the big bulb part, has already worked its way free. And so it's only being held in place by a very thin root, which makes them extremely easy. Let me show you again using turnips as an example. As I look at my turnips, this one is screaming at me that it's ready to harvest. The bulb is pressed above the soil surface, so I'll grab all of the leaves and then just work my way 
free and this turnip has been harvested. Now it does have a few more roots and so you do have to be careful that you're grabbing the whole thing. If your soil isn't loose or isn't moist, it is possible with turnips to actually pull all of the leaves, all of these stalks off the plant, but it's still pretty easy. Your goal should be to try to keep the leaves connected to the root so it all comes out in one piece. And you saw how easy that was with the beets. Radishes are the same way. As the radishes grow and mature, the shoulders will push above the soil. And then it's a simple matter of grabbing either the root or the leaves and pull the whole thing out. And then you have a nice little radish harvest. The turnips are a little more difficult because they do have more roots that are grabbing onto the soil. But again, you saw how easy it is. But when you get to the very long roots, like the carrots and the parsnips, you need to be more careful because if you just grab the leaves and pull, you might be left with a handful of leaves and the root is still in the ground. The carrots will not push their shoulders above the soil much. It does depend on the type of carrot. So what I'll do is I'll actually go in and with my finger dig around the carrot. Now, you can use a trowel for this, and I actually recommend using a trowel, but this is a variety of carrot that's called short and sweet. So I know that the carrot is not particularly long. I can identify that this carrot is ready for harvest. I'll grab all the leaves and I'll pull. And because it's a shorter carrot, the whole plant comes out of the ground. Now, if I look at the carrot right next to it, I can see it's not ready for harvest. In fact, the roots are very small, even though the rest of the plant is big. This one was robbing all the energy. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this plant at the same time. It started to bolt. It's not gonna be good eating. I'll add this to the compost pile, but I'll continue harvesting this carrot bed using the same basic method. This carrot is a cosmic purple, which I know to have a longer root. So now I'll use the trowel and I'll dig around it, but I'm digging away from the carrot because I don't want to damage it. And now I can get in and I can see the root much more clearly. Because it's a bigger carrot that goes deeper, I don't want to pull with the leaves because it might separate. So now I'm going to actually try to grab as much of the root as possible and then pull the root out. And I met my goal, everything stays intact. I use a similar method with parsnips. Now, depending on the variety, parsnips can get very long roots. So I'll use a trowel to determine how big the top of the root is and if it's getting close to harvest. And then I'll take a spade and I'll actually dig a hole along the edge of the rows where I'm growing the parsnips. And I'll try to get down along the edge of the row and work the soil away from the root so that I can grab about halfway down the root. If you just grab the top of a parsnip and pull, you might actually pull the root apart and only get half of it. So you need a really good grip. And so by digging that hole and getting the parsnip into the direction of the hole, it becomes quite easy to pull them out. And then you just move away some more of the soil and grab the next parsnip. Now, you can get in and try to dig up the whole bed, but when I've tried that, I've always ended up cutting some of those roots with my spade. So I find the method of starting with an edge and then gradually working into the bed of parsnips works better for me. And I always meet my goal, getting one long root with the leaves still attached. Ideally, you're thinning out your plants as they grow, so you don't have a problem like with the carrots. But beets are notorious for growing very close to each other, even when you do thin them out. So you might have a situation like this where they're literally growing on top of each other. That's no problem. Just go ahead and harvest them the same way. 
This opens up space for other plants to grow. When they're ready, harvest them. You can also do a little thinning out at harvest. So here I have three beets growing side by side. The one on this side is still pretty small. And the one on this other side still has some room to grow. So now I'm just gonna harvest the one in the middle to give the opportunity for these other two to grow a little bit bigger before I harvest. As I mentioned with the parsnips, getting a spade in here and digging up these root vegetables is definitely an option. Now, I'm often growing plants like turnips next to carrots, next to spinach, next to cucumber, and so I don't want to disrupt the bed too much, which is why I do it by hand one plant at a time. And I'm most of the time only harvesting what I'm going to eat that day or the next day. But when you have a whole bunch of these root vegetables ready to harvest, sure, come in with a spade and dig them up. Just be careful about slicing off some of the big roots. Then you can have a big harvest and they're all ready to ferment or freeze or give away to friends and family and neighbors. It takes almost no time to get a pretty nice harvest. I think tonight I'm having roasted root vegetables. Root vegetables can be grown during most of your gardening season, especially in the spring and in the fall. Now, I have a relatively short growing season in my Zone 5B Colorado garden. So the root vegetables that I just harvested, I started from seed outside in spring, and now I'm harvesting during the summer. As I clear up space, I'm starting more seeds for my fall garden, like in this bed where I had garlic and peas. Well, now I have mostly root vegetables along with some lettuce and spinach started in this bed and the seedlings have just started to emerge. Root vegetables grown in the fall when they've been exposed to a little bit of frost can be more delicious than those that are started in the spring and harvested in the summer. So, Definitely think about getting a second season on your root vegetables. Grow them twice every year. And by doing something extra, like starting a fall garden and having the root vegetables growing later in the year when you only thought you can grow them in the beginning of the year, is a great way to expand your gardening world, expand your knowledge, and really help make you a better gardener. And also, to help you on that journey, especially for the fall garden, Go ahead and watch one of these videos next. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.